there, but this one's gonna be a Q and A. So some of the questions are gonna be the ones that you guys submitted, but also we added like a couple too. We're just gonna elaborate on it, and yeah, this this podcast is pretty much it's just a Q and A, and that's pretty much it. Uh, okay. So the first question is, what defines your podcast? Hmm. You want to answer it, or I answer it first? I I could answer, but you could. You, you no, no, we're yeah, gonna answer right, it. Right. Yeah. Um, what defines our podcast? I guess, well, the name says it in itself, the in your 20s, right? Right. Um, I don't know, like, how it began. Like, well, first off, like, the way it began was because of Fudro. Um, He first reached out to me. Well, it was, like, a funny-ass story. But, like, yeah, he basically told me about this idea, and at the time, I dropped out of college. Like, this was, like, probably, like, six months after I, like, decided I wanted to drop out of college. Mm -hmm. And that's when he came up with the idea, yo, I want to create this podcast where, like, talks about, like, in your 20s, what life is like in your 20s, and, like, what it's basically about, like, how we all deal with shit, especially because that's, that's just the first stuff, like, after you graduate high school. Like, you know, you basically become an adult, right? And so, yeah, and he was just like, dude, I want to motivate others. I want to figure out like ways for that people like i guess a lot of us rely on college because that's all we're taught but in reality there's like so many other different ways you like you can go instead of going to college and just because you dropped out or do anything like that doesn't mean you're gonna fail in life right mm. and so i guess that's why we have all these people that we've met like some of them dropped out some of them did go to college but don't use their their majors and stuff like that and so, yeah, we just, I guess, like, we want to share that to people who, like, feel lost and, like, don't know what to do in life. There's, like, a way for them to watch and be like, oh, shit, like, I guess I, I still have time, you know? Like, there's always time for for you to do anything, basically. No, dude, that's true. That's uh, 100% true. Um, so, like, what pretty much defines, what defines your podcast? Um, but like you said, it's pretty much... Well, I think I hit rock bottom when I was like, not rock bottom, but like I was going through it when I was like 19, 20. So going, battling with that, cause I was so close to like dropping out. And also too, I was like, didn't know what I was doing. I switched my majors too, just keep that in mind. I, I hit this wall where I'm just like, I had no one to talk to. I feel like my friends were just living their best life. My friends were joining fraternity, sororities, whatever, making new friends. And I feel like, yeah, I was doing that too. But also too, I felt like, I hit a wall where I'm just like, who am I? Why am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. I don't even like business like that to be majoring in a business. Okay. Um, so I, either way, I have an older sister too. She was like 24, 23 at that time when I was like entering college. And like school was so pressured on her. We're in a Latino culture. And I just feel like everyone battled like, what do I do? How mm -hmm. do I do it? Um, and then the number one thing is like, go to school, go to college. Yeah. Lucky for me, I never minded going to school growing up. Okay. I don't like paying for it. Right, like yeah. no one does. No, yeah. But I never, I never really liked that. So either way, point is, what the Fanja podcast is pretty much like finding different outlets, different resources, different alternatives, yeah. than just going to college, right? True. Especially like for us Latinos, like yeah, our parents come from a third world country or from a very, very, um, not wealthy place, so they just want us to go to school, yeah. so we can like take care of the family, right? Yeah, and um, basically get like. Live the American dream, which Live? is which is getting a major and like living a okay life. Yeah, like, like get a philosophy major and we made it. Yeah. Right? Nah, yeah. it does it doesn't work like that. So, especially nowadays, day of age, and um, so yes, yeah, pretty much I'm just like okay, like we don't need college, right? Yeah. There's a lot. My sister didn't go to college, and I feel like you know she doesn't need to, yeah. right? She didn't like school. No, yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people hit their head, especially in our culture. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people hit their head if they don't. And parents look down on people that don't go to college, don't yeah. continue. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm just like, if you go to college, go ahead. Yeah. If you can afford it. Um, if you don't, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much, yeah, that's what the Fudger Podcast is like. Just giving people advice. If they're struggling, like how I struggled and wanted mm -hmm. to talk to someone, I just felt like I couldn't. Maybe there's people that could have listened to me. I just didn't reach out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go around people interviewing people on the streets. So like I ask questions that I wanted to know because maybe someone else is asking it, so that maybe there's someone on the other side of the screen saying, Watch oh, it. shoot. Being like, you're down. This, yeah. is, this is the answer. This is the question that I was looking for or yeah. something. Like, reaching out for help. That's why when we interview these other people, most of them didn't go to college. Yeah, that's like, true. Like, Los Cotas didn't go to college, and he's yeah. doing really good. Yeah, hell yeah. And, um, 
uh, more people, bro. Like, like a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. And like some of them did go to college, but they don't use them. They don't use yeah. yeah. And um, that's pretty much like in your twenties. Like it's so I, I'm 23. But there's this one thing that I will say. Although some of them did not go to college, it did go. A, a main important thing that they would always say is connections. Yeah. Also, like oh yeah, the people you talk to, the people you meet, that's the way of making it out. Like because like it could open so many opportunities for you and like no matter what as long as you have those connections like you can do like 100%. well well in your life so yeah 100 percent. just like the connections like literally networking i was literally telling my mom today i was just like why does my cousin so i have this cousin named donnie mm-hmm. i'm gonna edit up uh her name out because yeah. i know she watches this She's always been smart. She got accepted to lane tech, but she developed this rare disease in her stomach that made her not go to another college. Like she couldn't go. Oh, like her insurance okay. didn't cover it. Like yeah. she would die. Damn. She got very um, she got very, blo- not bloated. Like, in Spanish is like inflamada. Yeah. Um, and we had to take her inflammation. Every, inflammation. Inflammation. So every Sunday we had to take her to like this therapeutic place. I don't know what, but she did amp- acupuncture where the yeah. needles on. Yeah. She had to do that. And she had to take so many medicines throughout the day. Like, if she stops taking it, even for, like, she one day, t- she's not, she's 24. Either way, she had, like, perfect score. She had a perfect ACT, four point, I don't know what, and went to Lane Tech. She got accepted to, like, multiple different universities, too, as well. Couldn't go because of the disease, whatever. Mm. Point is, she graduated from Univer- UIC or University of Chicago with two degrees. She's 24, 25, perfect everything, can't get a job. Like she just can't get a job, right? Damn, yeah. Um, my coworker John too, very like, he's very qualified for everything. Worked for an organization. He worked for the Cubs. I'm gonna say, John, you worked for the Cubs for five years. I'm not trying to put you under the table, but it's like a story that inspired me because like I look up to you, and you're very hardworking. So like, he gave it his all five years to his organization, mm-hmm. and he went to school for sports marketing. Very very qualified guy. Very very great social skills. Friendly guy. Easy to talk to. Everyone loves him. Everyone that goes into work always remembers him. And I look up to that. They turn his back, they turn their back on him and he applied for different positions for that organization because he needs more experience. This guy got like promoted, I think, once or twice, correct me if I'm wrong, in the Cubs organization and couldn't get a position, a full time position there. Damn. He left the organization. He doesn't work for the Cubs anymore. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Everything's about connections and stuff like that. So yeah. I feel like the people we met already, dude, we no yeah we can pivot if let's just say this all dies mm. we can pivot ourselves somewhere else yeah and we have them in our contacts yeah and so like yeah if we need help yeah. yeah um yeah so pretty much that's what the find your podcast is pretty much just giving out different alternatives and also to like people in their 20s like to party and stuff like that but yes. providing different alternatives just to yeah. just to know you're not alone and everything's going to be okay yeah but and also we, we also show part of that like yeah. like the party scene like we know, well, at least, like, I'm still, I'm still, like, getting older, but, like, yeah. like you know, it's, like, that's going to happen. Like, party yeah, and shit. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, the party stuff, yeah. This, it's it's part of the, people do it all the time. But, like, yeah, we, we just want to be ourselves. Yeah. We're pretty much, like, showing ourselves as a 20-year-old, right? Like, what yeah. we eat, we like to work out. Yeah. What goes through our minds, you and me, right? Yeah. And we try to be the most authentic. But, um, yeah, that's what the Find Your Podcast, yeah. pretty much, yeah. Just, just giving down advice, pretty much, and, uh. Yeah. Um, uh, so, second question: um, What creators slash famous per like person inspired you, and who do you look up to in the celebrity world? You don't go for this, yeah, because I really don't know. <laughs> Honestly, without a doubt, Kyle Forgar from Nelk. Really? Um, he's always gonna be like the number no gun guy uh, that I look up to. He created. Besides of him, like, coming up from prank, he's just, like, such a mastermind in, like, business and, like, just knows yeah. how to navigate. Yeah. He's just so, I don't know, like, not throwing hate to, like, everyone else involved to now or who left and stuff, but, like, he saw such a big vision and continue it. I don't know the whole story. I'm just doing it based off a podcast and what mm-hmm. I know. He just continued it because he saw this vision regardless who was going to be there, and he continued it. And now, like, Happy Dad's, like, yeah. was born. And, dude, like, Happy Dad's crushing it, so... And Nelk is just so big. Like, it's just like an empire at this point. Yeah. So, Kyle just, like, he can do it all. Like, he can act. Like, I don't think people don't really say that. He can act. He can go on the street, portray a different persona, yeah. joke around people, and talk to anyone. Second, he knows how to edit. Goes, like, goes crazy. He has great ideas. And just from a business perspective, it's a genius. Yeah, that is. From content, business, to yeah. anything. So, yeah, 
I really look up to him not just for content, but I look up to him just from every aspect. He's 28. Dutch. 28 or 29 now, but yeah. he's still a young guy, and um, he's still hungry for more. Yeah. So, you know who... Well, for me, it's it's not like I look up to him, but I like the way they do things is the Paul brothers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. like them. Like, uh, maybe, like, now they're getting better, but, like... They they're smart when it comes to money. Like they yeah. know how to build something up, and like with the boxing, this whole boxing thing. Like, yeah, they know how to like make Market. it so people like want to watch it. Logan Paul with Prime, like think about it. Fucking He's so loud with J O P, like the Latin. Like, I saw that music. Uh, yeah. Peso Pluma, like he knows what to do or like when to do it so that like he gets hella views. Also, like right now. Him and his brother are on this podcast after the fight. And both of them are just talk, talking shit to each other, like saying, like, Jake Paul is telling him, oh, like, I'm definitely a better fighter than you. And Logan Paul is like, nah, like, like I fought Floyd Mayweather, and I hate that people mm. choose you because you're the easiest opponent. You know what they're doing? They're, right now they're building up something so that later on, both of them make like a big ass fight, oh, 100%. and then it turns to like a, probably one of the most watched, uh, most watched, most mm, like they're gonna fight. Like they said, they're gonna fight one day, and that's a very smart, like yeah. strategic or, trust piece. Which yeah. is what right now what they're doing. They're trying to yeah. build the fight up and being like, oh, they hate each other right now. But that's that. I mean, that's genius. Like yeah, thinking about that, I'd be like, damn, like that's gonna make hella money just knowing because like you yeah. have a, a big fan base. Jake Paul and Logan Paul definitely like, the smartest guy. Yeah, they're no, actually yeah. You're actually right. Logan yeah. Paul, I like Jake Paul more than Logan Paul. It, now I like Jake Paul more just because I don't know. He just seems like uh, he seems more nice, genuine. But I always liked him over Logan since I knew them, just because I feel like Jake has to do what he wants. Yeah, they call I, him the problem child. Oh yeah. But then again, I feel like he's just so smart. Like he perceived himself as like a troublemaker. Maybe he was. I don't know. Yeah. But then again, he's like super smart in how to market himself. Like he's yeah. an entertainer. Yeah, he is. Even he's though like born for that. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Even though Logan Paul too is like very successful, very talented too, in everything he does. Yeah. You know, they're both great people. But yeah, Jake Paul. Jake Paul's a no, monster, bro. I look yeah. up to Jake Paul too. Yeah. Uh. So like the next, moving on to the next one. At what point? Oh, all right, 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 right. I know who said this one too. Uh, at what point in your YouTube success journey would you quit your job and do this full time? Mm. To be honest, I mean, I don't have a job, but I like, I'm like basically like an entrepreneur, I guess you would say. But I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I feel like me, no matter how much money we make off of YouTube or anything like that, I'm always going to like doing something else too. Like, yeah. I know we talked about like oh, having a nightclub one day and shit yeah. like that. And so, I don't know. I, I feel like I would never quit the hustle. Hundred percent. That was no cringy shit, but yeah. No, hundred. That, that was a little bit cringy, but yeah, I would never quit. Like, I don't know. I just like finding ways to make money without actually having a nine to five. You I know feel that. That I I think I don't know. Something about me that's how I've always been. Like, uh huh. I've always sold shoes. I've always like I've always liked reselling things, and so. You always did have a passion with that. I did see yeah. that too. But uh, no, no, no. no. I'm gonna elaborate this because. I was literally thinking about this like yesterday. Actually, this was yesterday, like uh -huh. true story. So at what point in your YouTube success? All right, so like most of you guys don't know this, and I, I feel like no one knows besides your family and me, mm -hmm. but um, you were supposed to be in, in fighter fighter school yeah. to be a firefighter. Yeah. Uh, This guy already enrolled in classes. You said you paid too, right? Yeah. So you already paid and everything. Um, yeah. I remember one day, this was like somewhere in May or April. I, I forget what month, mm -hmm. but you were supposed to start in June, right? Yeah. Sometime, I remember it. We were yeah. going to Lakeshore. I picked you up and you said, bro, I'm not going to go because you were supposed to start like a, a day. I you were supposed to start like real soon. Yeah. You said, I'm not going to go. And I'm just like, oh, shit, why? And you were you legit said, dude, if I if I join this and I become a firefighter, I know that I'm going to get comfortable and it's a plan B. Or yeah. you're like, I know I'm going to get comfortable and I'm not going to continue my passion. Yeah. You said that straight up. Yeah. I didn't say nothing. I thought of it. I'm just like, damn, like that shit's powerful, right? Yeah. And I'm like, damn, you're like, bro, like I don't want to give up. On yeah. the vision that I see, so I'm not gonna do it. Like you, you paid this. Yeah. You were determined too, because you told me this months ago that you want to be a fighter, fighter, yeah. going through difficult stages. And yeah. then, last minute, you said, "I don't want to do it because I'm don't want to be comfortable." Like you. Yeah. I well. To, all right. So this is what I I like. So a whole bunch of shit was happening during that period. Like, um, some stuff with my family too. Like, so it was like, 
there was like a lot of things going on. I, I was just praying to God. I was just like, God, like whatever happens, happens. But like, like I need an answer. And basically, like what happened with my family. Like I, I don't want to really put that out. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but um, you don't have to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So basically, it was just like a choice whether I, I actually go, and then I like, kind of like. I don't know, like. So basically, my sisters, I, so there had to be someone to take care of my sisters, and so I, I like stuff. Then I was like, I'll do it, but I have school, and I was just thinking, like, damn, like if I go to school, like my sisters are not gonna be taken care of. And then I also thought about it. I was like, if I do become a firefighter, like it's like I know I'm gonna stick with that, like, yeah. and, and that's just gonna be like an okay job. Like, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll have money. But I, it won't be like what I want, you know. Which is a, which is like you'll you'll forget your dreams for a minute. Yeah, yeah. and which is that could well, lead on for also, eternity. Also, like what my brother said, he was like, "Man, I used to have those dreams too That's of not. becoming a millionaire, but it never happened." And yeah. so I was just like, "Yeah, but like that's why you do your dreams. You like even if you fail, like Keep going, you're bro. still like one step ahead of everybody else." Yeah, right? and so yeah, that's no, no, no. I mean, dude. When you when you when you did that decision, I, I I sort of got like I'm not even bullshitting. When you did that decision, I was just like, damn, bro, like that's no, yeah. like that was last, like that took me off guard because I'm like that's last minute, yeah. and then second too, I'm just like, damn, like you saw you saw another vision, yeah. way be past beyond that. And you expressed yourself multiple times. You said, yeah. I always vision myself in this whip, in yeah. this stuff, <laughs> but like you know anyone can say it, but like you actually took like it's just you took that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And it's only been two months, right? Yeah. So we don't know yet because we're still striving and still pushing. Yeah. But so you took that faith and you took that risk and like investment. Yeah. And you still, like, dude, it's just crazy. It's just okay. crazy. So to me, I'm just like, damn, I look up to that shit because like, I'm like, bro, like, a lot of people won't know that. But, like, dude, like, that takes balls. And a lot of people okay. won't do that. No, right? Yeah. You were literally borderline paid over a rack yeah. <laughs> to go to school. And you said no just because yeah. you're just like, I know on the other side of the mountain, there's yeah. double, triple, way more than triple. But, like, yeah. a ton more that I can give. Is that something that I feel like people should know? Cause that's, dude, that's that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But um, so I'm gonna answer this real quick. At what point in your YouTube success journey would you quit your job and do this full time? Um, well, currently I'm at Vineyard Vines. Um, I'm just doing it to graduate. So I graduate in May. So once I graduate, I would plan to live in your, leave Vineyard Vines. Mm -hmm. Um, we get a hefty discount though. So like a lot of people, what they do once they graduate, get their full time career, they stay, they work like once or twice a month just to get the discount. Discount. Mm -hmm. But um, if I could leave it, I'd leave right away. Really? Right? Yeah. Like okay. with like serious, serious money, and it didn't, and it didn't interfere with my school. I would have been left. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been left. So um, yeah. So I think as soon as like I graduate school like around May and like we start picking up like more money and shit. Mm -hmm. I, I'll leave in your minds. Like it'll be yeah. tough too. Cause I built I built a lot of memories and like a lot of relationships now. So like it'll yeah. be tough that, but, um, I think once I graduate, I think that's when I would quit my job and go pretty much full time. Cause, yeah. uh, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I have right now at this moment to plan. Yeah. Okay. So, Oh, scenario. <laughs> scenario. You want to ask this one? Yeah. All right. All right. If someone came and gave you 50k what would you do with it and how would you spend it question mark okay um for me i would definitely like tell us yo let's invest it in like all our shit like hella and get a studio yeah let's get a studio because we all our pods we do it in different locations I don't, yeah i don't know if you guys can tell by that <laughs> a mobile podcast yeah i guess it's cool that we do it is it. cool it is but cool. it'd be nice to have a studio you yeah know, for us like just to in edit. case add it too and just to chill yeah just to chill have like maybe we could chill with the people before we have a hundred percent it's, so it's that like build a relationship yeah what's his name uh los cuts yeah his headquarters dude Hell you can yeah, chill you let's hair ass, yeah and you can, he can eat and make something there yeah no like, yeah it, that's like nice hundred percent um and then invest it um basically i i honestly don't think i would keep it maybe keep like 10 grand and see what else i could do with it but like most of that money would probably go into like investing it and like for us to have better quality you know 100 percent stuff like that 100 percent. maybe like 10k for like hookers and <laughs> no no i mean <laughs> no, but uh 
I mean, if someone did come up and just said, hey, here's 50 racks and stuff, uh, honestly, yeah, studio will be first. Oh, I, yeah. I'd want to like, you know, be like, yo, bro, let's look for a studio, and then we'll just look for a studio right away. Yeah. Second would be um, upgrade all our equipment, right? Yeah. Um, this is all good stuff, but we can resell it. Uh-huh. So like, get better boom arms, so like, keep these and get like another more, mm-hmm. get better mics. And get like two more cameras, even though I feel like the iPhone, just fun fact, you can start with your iPhone. We're recording it's with a one right now. Good ass camera, to be honest. Good yeah. quality. Uh, I'd pretty much just invest in everything. Like, as soon as we get a, as soon as we upgrade everything, like the gadgets, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go straight to like a studio. Mm-hmm. So obviously, it's going to be like ten, fifteen thousand dollars for like a down payment, all this other stuff to do that. And then the rest, maybe remodel it. Oh, okay. I like put like a nice neon sign in your 20s, yeah, stuff that, like that. Be real. And then, like, every time, like, when I'm sitting, you're sitting. Instead of like popping up our names like Instagram, we'll we just have like a neon sign. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be. Cool. You're like her sitting in page. It would be cool, right? And then like we can custom one for like the co- something like that, yeah. like a coast. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, and then like whatever's left over, yeah, dude, like travel, bro. True. Oh, like I have travely, bro. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Like traveling. Yeah, that would. Oh, I like traveling. Hundred yeah. percent. Like yeah. Like would it be cool like to get someone else like to work for us and stuff? Absolutely, right? Yeah. But like I feel like. I feel like you're pretty good at what you do. Like you're good at, you're pretty good. You're pretty organized. You have a lot of stuff going on, but you multitask. Yeah. I feel like I'm pretty good too with like multitasking throughout the day and scheduling. So yeah, I feel like we'll do good for right now, but like re- reinvest everything and then yeah. traveling. Cause yeah. if we get someone else to go do a pod, cause we have gotten people yeah. in another state. Uh, easy. We go to like, yo, let's go. So that's pretty much, that's the scenario. So yeah. Uh, how do you find motivation when you're feeling down and lonely? How do I find motivation when I'm feeling down and lonely? This is this is actually a tough one, but not so. In my opinion, well, no, it's not even opinion. This is what I do. It's a fact. I don't I don't wait for motivation to come. I literally just finish what I have to do throughout that day. So whatever I wrote down the night before that I have to finish, that's what I end up doing. So let's just say for an example, tomorrow we have three pods to film, two reels to put out, mm-hmm. and I have to edit like four content, and I still have to go to work. Mm-hmm. Right? I still have to fit in running. Yeah. Right. I wake up that next morning, I only slept three hours, and I just don't feel motivated to do anything, right? Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe I just make an excuse to not finish one reel or make an excuse not to film a pod or something, right? Yeah. No. Um, I'm going to finish all of that because once I finish all of that, that but, next night where I get a full night's sleep, if I do, mm-hmm. I'm going to wake up and mm-hmm. be like, I finished it. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll feel proud of myself, and that's when the motivation will go. Okay. So, uh, it's just like if you don't want to go to the gym. Yeah. What happens when you go to the gym? You feel good. You're you like, feel damn, good, it's the yeah. best feeling that I actually yeah. went, and you get that motivation. True. So, um, I feel like I get the motivation after I d- complete something I don't want to complete. Yeah. And then once I complete it, that gives me the motivation. And then it gives me evidence that I can do it, so I do it again. Mm. So, that time that we talked about when I'm feeling down, or like when I'm feeling down in general, I scroll through my Instagram. And I'm like, I did all this. What makes it different that I can't do it again? So I'm like, this is the evidence to prove that I did yeah. this and I could do it again and I could do it better. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much it's just like, don't doubt yourself. And even if you do, just do it either way. So if you don't want to do something, still do it. And that's how you'll get motivation. That's how I get motivation. Maybe that's how people could get yeah. motivation. For me, I just I just say like positive things to myself. Like if I'm thinking negatively and I'm just like, damn, what the what's the point of all this? Are we like, you know? Yeah. I'm just like, you know what? Like that's like there was that quote that was like, um, if you get hate, that means you're doing something right. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. And so like even though I get like those thoughts of hate, like like I wonder what people think, like uh, I feel like they're hating, you know, like yeah. yeah. Then I'm just like, you know what, that means I'm doing something right. You know? Right. And so, yeah, I don't know. I always, I always pray to God too. I always like, pray, yeah. Yeah, I, I always thank God no matter what. If yeah. like something's going bad, I'm just like, you know what? Thank, thank you, God. That's a good one too. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's a good one. Praying, that yeah, helps, yeah. Praying helps a lot. Um, I don't know. And to be honest, when I, when I don't feel like doing something, I just do it. <laughs> like, yeah. like I don't think about it. I'm just like, you know what? Either I get this done or I don't. But if I don't get it done, I'm gonna feel like guilty. Yeah, I'm not doing it. So I just do it. You're like you told me to. You do the one, two, three, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. Just, fuck it. Like yeah, yeah no, I don't want to do it. But that's that's what makes me feel better. Like if I just do it, and yeah. then it, like time flies by, and then I'm just like, oh shit, I actually did it. Yeah. Right, but yeah. No, hundred so. percent. That's the same thing. Just do it when you don't want to do it. Yeah. And you feel better afterwards because yeah. you're like, I actually did it. Yeah. So, no, that's good, though. Yeah. That's good. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So, another question is, what is a dream goal of yours that you want to complete in five 
10 or 20 years. Just me? Yeah. So I'm going to split this up in three sections for 5, 10, 20. So in five years, in five years, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to live really, really nice, comfortably, right? Yeah. We've discussed this multiple okay. times. Like, I just want to have, I want to have like a nice place. Um, I want to have like our own studio. Mm. I want to have stuff already flowing. So like money flowing in yeah. without like having to like really worry. having to worry what's going to yeah. happen next with it. So like having that freedom, right? In the next five years and also making a stable, like actually putting out our name out there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like maybe in a year or so we have Chicago on lock, right? Mm. We're the podcast, but I want to go more. I, I'm thinking big, right? Which yeah. too, it's not too soon because no. I actually visualize it. Yeah. And I've been thinking about it before this. I want to go all over the cross America. Okay. I want to go abroad too. I want to, I want to stamp my name on yeah. it, right? I want it to be right there in your twenties. Oh shit. Herson Pedro in yeah. your twenties, right? I want, I want to have a billboard. There you, that's <laughs> that's, fun. Fun. that's a good one. That's a good one too. But um, <laughs> no, like a household name, right? Yeah. Like, like you said, Logan Paul. Yeah. 10 years ago, you heard that. That was not yeah. a household name. You don't yeah. know, but it doesn't even flow. It's no. a household name yeah. now. But um, that's what I want in five years to have a household name. Mm -hmm. At least in Chicago, right? Okay. Ten years, ten years. I want to have a product. Mm. Like I want to have something already. Okay, like in your twenties podcast. I want to pivot out a little bit and just like expand. A bit yeah. More. So, yeah. No, yeah. It yeah. could be anything else, right? It can be clothing. It could be a a drink. Anything, right? Yeah. That's in ten years. Also, I'd want to have, and also, I'll be thirty three, right? Yeah. Um, maybe I'd want a family at that point, right? Who knows? Mm. So family could be involved in that too as well in 10 years. But I also, I still want to have like a good life too. 20 years. I'd be what, like 43? Yeah, I'll be 43. Yeah, I'm still a young guy. Yeah, still a young, young yeah. guy. But at 43, I feel like if everything goes good, goes to plan around like 45, 50, I think that I'll take the leap of faith and that's when I'll come to you and just be like, yo, bro, Cause I'm two years older than you. Yeah. Pretty much when I have, I'll just be like, "Yo, like, let's do this nightclub." Yeah. Like, I wanna, I wanna execute that nightclub. Not too old, or not. We're not no. too old. No. We still have that energy, but now we have too much connections. Yeah, and we can. Yeah. And we can do that nightclub in Chicago. Cause I feel oh, like yeah. Chicago. All right, all right. Cause it's gonna be a clip. Yeah. Chicago is the greatest city in the world. Like seriously, we have it all. Like. We are so diverse. We have the best food. I've tried food from like what? We've tried food from California, from New York, from Miami, from like different locations. Chicago's so great. Like we have everything. If it wasn't yeah. for the winter, we'd be number one. Yeah. Right? Sure. We go to all the clubs. We've been to clubs already. Yeah, they're great and stuff. But I just feel like we can just make it do it better. <laughs> we can just make it better. And I feel like the more connections we make throughout the years. We would definitely bring that audience in, you know. We bring the celebrity. Yeah. We bring the audience. We bring everything. We can fill podcasts. We can hook people up and be like, you can film stuff here. Yeah. Um, But the number one thing, like, besides outside, like, that podcast thing that I want to have just under my belt. Mm. And I've said this before. I want to buy Michael Jordan's house if it's not bought. Oh, I want to have that. I want to buy Michael Jordan's house. It's in Highland Park, and I want to buy Michael Jordan's house. Damn. I actually feel like I will. I think I will buy Michael Jordan's house. And yeah. um, yeah, that's that's a goal that I want to have. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So now ask to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, in five years, I mean, I can already see that us like really doing this full time. Yeah. Um, having our own studio and stuff. I can. I don't know. Like. I guess it's not a dream. Like I, I can already see it being accomplished. You know, for what? Like everything. Like oh, all, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. we vision. Like us, like meeting all these people and stuff. Like you 100%. know. So it's like, I guess the only goal that I really have is just for everything to take off. You know, like one hundred percent. Five years, right? Yeah, five years. Like. At least being able to say, yo, I, I make good money off of doing this. Um, the nightclub, too, you know? That uh, gonna be yeah, sick. that's going to be sick. Also, that's going to be sick. Owning a G Wagon. That that's going to be sick, too. Yeah, that's going to be sick. I don't know. I just have visions of like us just like, you know, like being. You know, when you told me that the first time? Oh. Yeah, I remember the first time you told me that. I feel like good vibes happen. Literally, stuff. Really good stuff started to happen right immediately after we yeah. talked about it. Uh, we did a lot of said about podcasts. Oh, yeah. I think it was a long day. Yeah, I picked you up. It was 11 p.m. We had to drive to the south side. Um, we didn't know where we were getting going to, yeah. and we were driving through the new highway. I remember mm -hmm. it too vividly. I could mm -hmm. smell the air. Yeah, it was still cold. It was like around April, February. It was like March or somewhere mm -hmm. around there. We were driving, 
and then we were driving by the city on the, under the new highway and we were talking about it. You were just like, bro, I picture myself in that G-Wagon. And I'm just, I remember I told you, I'm like, dude, our life can be different in one year. Yeah. Like life can be yeah. so different in one, one year. year. Yeah. And then literally like two weeks after, bro, we, I think it was like two or three weeks after we met the milk boys. Yeah, the milk, milk, boys. The milk boys. Yeah. And yeah, you called me immediately. Yeah. They like heard the news of yeah. us being able to meet them. Yeah. And not even just that, we, that same day we met so many, that, that we whole day, many, yeah. we met so many people, met so many got connections, connections, got yeah. into places that we just, well, you know, yeah. you know, you know, felt like, I don't know, it felt good, like just being like, and then that's we got when, a taste of it. Yeah. And then yeah. that's when I'm just like, damn, we're, we're getting closer and closer. hundred percent. Yeah. And um, we were still like at 1K, 2K followers. Yeah. And then, yeah, after, dude, it's been four months, three months about it. And then we got in this five. Yeah. So if that only three months. Yeah. Right. So like, and we met all these cool people. You know, literally from the start. You know, from January to now. You know how many podcasts we put out? I counted. Let me guess. Um, I'll say somewhere around twenty-seven, twenty-eight. No, no, no. I'm from January to oh, August. Oh, okay, okay. Not overall. Overall, I think we had like twenty-four. Okay. Around there, for, okay. I think we put out seventeen or eighteen pods. Really? From only seven months around there, Damn. six months. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a lot. It's that is a lot. From uh, when we started to January, I think we only put out like five pods, six pods. And now we have, they have 17 pods and that's we, crazy. Just to show you that we, well, we advanced editing, we advanced like the technology, things got easier, things yeah. got smoother. So with time, like things just get way smoother, right? Um, mm. Yeah, bro. Um, it's it's just crazy. It it's is. just crazy. Like in three months, it's only gonna keep on getting. That's crazy. what I'm saying. One day we're gonna look back at this and we're just gonna be like, damn. It's yeah. tough, bro. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, all right, all right. I remember this one. Mm -hmm. Um, we were asked this one. What are three things? Yeah. What are three things that are a must when starting a podcast? A must. Obviously, mics. A hundred percent. Mics. Camera doesn't really matter because you you can use your phone. Cameras do not matter. Yeah. I stress out about that. Cameras do not matter. Yeah. I feel like phone qualities are better than regular cameras do to shoot yeah. to 4k yeah point is just yeah. have enough storage or just have a hard drive yeah upload it to your storage your device we use a lacy mm -hmm. you're set literally yeah. your phone the hard drive is probably the yeah. one of the most important things the, well <laughs> the hard drive is the best investment yeah. you can make we buy the lacy there's probably better but we get the five terabyte mm -hmm. that is your best friend in content yeah the amount of gigabytes you use making films and all that stuff eats up everything yeah we went through we went through a five terabyte in like two months, two or three months. Also, what's that thing called? That the Zoom recorder? Yeah, the Zoom oh, recorder. Because when we first started off, I don't know if you remember, like we had trouble um, with, with audio. Yeah, audio, like video. It was like a we probably took like in like thirty minutes just trying to set up everything, making sure the mics worked until we got Good. that thing. Yeah, we had a uh, so we used GarageBand to start, so everything we used to plug off this USB cord. And we had to have like enough, right? So, cause there's only three USB port. Um, it's just crazy too, cause like it took us 30 minutes, 40 minutes just to get the audio set up. And so they say, oh, tweak and have to restart. So it took another 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. But um, dude, oh, oh my God, I can get through it a lot. But like a good, a good one is uh, just have a topic, right? Starting a podcast is have a topic, have questions, um, be like, confident. Yeah, be confident. I mean, you don't have to be like, cause like, to be honest, I think I started off really bad, and I'm yeah. I, I'm getting used to it too. Um, but yeah, like um, what was his uh, exclusive son seven three when he hundred percent when when he told us he was just like, like everyone's trying to start a podcast. Like, what he said, what's, what makes what, you different? Yeah, what makes you different? Yeah. So I guess always consider that too. What makes you different in yeah. setting a podcast? Hundred percent. Oh, this is gonna go all over the place too. Uh, like seven seven three, and I. And it's, it's such a key part. It's like he said in one of the videos, he just said, you appreciate it more if you get it out the mud, right? So if it's given to you, you won't appreciate it that much, right? And I've how I interpreted that is like, damn, like, yeah, like if someone gives us a shout out and we make like 30K subscribers, mm -hmm. it won't feel as good. And I feel like we won't be satisfied with that. So we want yeah. more. Pretty much it's just like if we get that 30,000 30, subscribers by ourselves, mm -hmm. just hustling and stuff like that, we'll appreciate it more and know how it, what it took, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, he said that just always know to starting a podcast, don't overthink it. Yeah. I think the guy overthought it a little bit too. It's of what to post, how to post it. Just post it. You just have yeah. to start, bro. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
yeah just start it in pretty much and um the gadgets don't really worry just film off your camera and get some good quality mics doesn't even have to be that expensive and um yeah that's it yeah Inter interesting topics that's it just show your personality be yourself that's it yeah definitely that's the sort of podcast um we might, we might have to cut this short bro for real yeah the guy said he's gonna be there at 8 15. 8 15 yeah well if one more world, can we do one? no yeah yeah all right, all right. Well, what's, what's, what's the best question i'm gonna ask this one because i it's like it's like a very good one too what makes you a man okay in today's generation slash how would you how would you define being a man okay so being a man in today's generation i think is having a good job yeah or at least one that pays well being able to take care of whether you have a partner or your family yeah um also just being somebody who people can rely on like oh yeah like being protective like yeah somebody who like being somebody that people in if they get in trouble or like need something like you'd be that person to call right yeah um also how would you define being a man i guess a man is somebody who's takes care of their family um i guess is a protector okay um A giver, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That's, really? that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, well, what makes you a man in today's generation? It's tough. That is tough because I just feel like it's hard just because we can't express ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like it's pretty difficult. Okay. You know, so it's like we can't really just go lean on someone and just be like, yo, like express your emotions. Sure. But um, what makes you a man in today's generation? I don't know. Just like just having a nice job, being like, being uh being stable being secure with yourself and also to yeah just having a high paying job nice career and that's it that's yeah. pretty much it um that question i don't know it's pretty tough in today's generations everything's rough right it is it yeah. goes both ways but how would you define being a man that's tough because i just feel like right now at the point of my life i feel like i'm just trying to discover that what is to be a man yeah let me rephrase that like how to be like an actual i don't know how to be an actual man i feel like just need re you just have to keep your word i feel like if you keep your word keep you get respect word. that's true that's um, like how scarface says it yeah all i have in this world is my for real is my my word and my balls <laughs> hey hey low key that's facts those are facts those are facts though but like he having your word i feel like makes you a man 100 yeah. percent. no matter what like you keep your word it's like a promise yeah you keep your word and you get the respect um always shaking have a firm firm handshake. handshake have a firm yeah have a firm handshake and um yeah just be a provider yeah, you know provider. having that work ethic being able to provide yeah. to protect and um yeah being um just i don't know how zoe said it like just being you can't call yourself a gentleman just because you open a door it's just yeah. like you have to be that person like have, yeah. have that ability to like so socialize and have that ability to like actually you know get that respect yeah. And also, I was gonna say like a lot, like I think you know uh, an important thing which I feel like I struggle with too, is like also loving yourself. I feel like as a mm. man, you need to love yourself a lot. That's and, yo, and, yeah. Because I I know I know I haven't gotten to that point where like I yeah. really love myself and like can rely on myself, and so yeah, I don't know. It's it's just like. A hundred. You, it's like you have to be secure with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Secure with yourself. Yeah. So you you really have to love confident. yourself. Confident. Confident. Yeah. That's basically it. It's yeah. That's how would you define being a man? I feel like well, it comes pretty much just personally. Mm. Um. Everyone has their own morals, but yeah, dude. Like, you have to be confident. You have to be secure with yourself. You just have to be ambitious, yeah. right? There's, ambitious. There was this book that I was reading, the book, and it talks about how a man is always supposed to, uh, try and be a better person every day and like because god made the man into w wanting all these things and in order to get that you need a you know like basically build up to be able to get that yeah so it, yeah. it's 100 percent facts too yeah. it's um people get it really mistaken it's not that difficult just being a man just being a man of your word yeah um just being respectful and being nice to people and stuff like that i don't know it's pretty straightforward but yeah. uh 
I know you have to leave. No, I am. So, uh, my, my no, 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 no. I, I know you have to leave. Something. But all right, guys, um, we have more special guests too. And uh, thank you for the journey too as well. We're going to put out more reels. So just like and subscribe that. If you have any questions, more Q&A, swipe up. Feel free to like contact her. Same. Feel free to contact me um, with any questions. We, we want to do more of these Q&A. So send more questions too as well. But all right, guys.